it's Nell, and I'm going to be leaving this garden in three weeks for a new home. And I'm like, I have to do a video on rosemary because I have to tell you how I've taken care of my ginormous rosemary that is just epically big. And this is a rosemary officinalis Tuscan blue. It's the one that gets really large. It gets, um, on the average, it gets about six feet by six feet. Mine is about six feet by about nine feet. It's really, really wide and keeps on growing. And rosemary is a wonderful plant. It's a real workhorse in the garden. It's a woody perennial herb that's oftentimes sold as a shrub. That's the section that you'll oftentimes find it in in the garden centers and an interesting fact is that it is in the mint family and it comes in a few forms obviously this is an upright form uh, this as I said is Tuscan blue there's also Tuscan spires um, miss miss Jessup's and golden rain are probably the most common ones that are upright I happen to have a golden rain out in the front of the garden also. And then there are the trailing ones or the ground cover ones. And the most common one is Prostratus and that one is uh, oftentimes sold as creeping or trailing a rosemary. And then there is um, Huntington Blue and Irene are the most common ones. And then there is the form that's sort of the cross between them. It's an upright and it also does some trailing to it. And the one that I used to use most commonly was Collinwood Ingram. Also, Ken Taylor and Boule are a couple more that fall into that category. Exposure. It prefers full sun, but it will do okay in part sun, just as long as the part sun is afternoon sun, that, that, that strong sun. Now, that being said, my golden rain out in the front is growing, and uh, it only gets like morning sun, so it's not as golden as it would be if it was growing in full sun. So if you want your rosemary to do the best that it can do, full sun. And in terms of water, you want to give it regular water, a weekly water to get it established. And after it is established, then you can back off on the watering to maybe every two weeks or so a good, a good uh, deep watering or every three weeks, depending on how hot it is. And it is subject to root rot, so don't overwater it. And it may not be as fond of like a cool, damp, wet climate as it is as this here in Santa Barbara is a Mediterranean climate. We get our moisture in the winter if we get it. And then it's pretty dry for like eight months out of the year. And it's not too fussy as to soil. It, it just needs to drain well. So if it's in, um, in the ground, you just make sure the soil isn't too heavy. And if it's in a pot, just make sure it's a potting soil or something that has like a lot of uh, amendments in it so the water will drain out. I will say though that it is it does better in an alkaline soil than in an acetic soil. And in terms of fertilizing, it doesn't need any. So it would just appreciate a composting about every a year or two and it would do best with that. Now cold hardiness, it is hardy to about 15 degrees, 15 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So it goes, it goes down fairly low. So if you get any colder than that, you'll want to bring yours indoors in the, in the winter time and keep it in the house and then bring it back. Now in terms of propagating, it's really easy. I've done it before many times. You just take a cutting about five inches. You don't want it to be the old, 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 old woody growth here, or you don't want it to be the really new growth, but you can take it about here and you just put it in water and in about probably about two weeks ago, uh, in about two weeks, you'll see roots start to appear and then you can wait until the roots get good size and then you can plant it into that nice loose mix. And I'm moving in just three weeks, so I'm going to be taking some cuttings so I can, I can root them and then I can have this plant growing in my new home. And mine flowers heaviest in the winter into spring, it just gets covered with these blue, beautiful blue blooms and the bees are all over it. And then it'll bloom like sporadically off and on, but that is the heaviest bloom. And the flowers are a bonus, but of course what this plant is grown for is it's an herb and it's used in the culinary trade a lot. And the two, um, the two ones that chefs 
apparently prefer are Tuscan Blue, this one, and Tuscan Spires. They have the best flavor. And what you want to use, preferably, is this Tender New Growth is the best to use in cooking. But you can also use this down here. It's just it just gets a little bit a little bit stemmier as, as you get down. Whereas this is nice and nice and tender, and oh, it, it smells so good. Ah. And this plant has many uses. You find it in containers, you find it as a hedge, you find it um, growing over banks, you find it in rock gardens, you find it in Mediterranean gardens, it's of course in herb gardens, and also it can be found in topiary form too. Oh, and here it it grows along the coast. It's just, it's just fine. That doesn't bother it at all. And if you live someplace where deer are an issue, this plant is considered to be deer resistant. Indoors, it can be a little bit tricky, so you need to give it as much light as you can. Back off on the watering because of the root rot. The thing is, in the winter, it likes cooler temperatures, so if it's Indoors, our homes tend to be drier, hotter because of the heat, so that's why it's a little bit tricky and also because of the light. It needs that good, strong, strong light. So if you do have it growing indoors, maybe you can have it in a smaller pot so, so you can take it outside so it can enjoy the uh, and, and great outdoors and the, and the months that aren't freezing, or if it's bigger, you can have it in a fiberglass pot so it's easier to transport and that will make it a lot happier. In terms of pests, I haven't seen it with any growing outdoors, but I've read that it can be susceptible to um, spittle bug, uh, spider mite, um, I think scale are the ones that it is that are that they're most susceptible to, if, if that's wrong. <laughs> because again that I don't know exactly I will put it in the blog post so if, if, if pests are a concern for you now I want to show you the rosemary golden rain it has a little bit of gold here but this is growing in a lot of like bright shade because it has this has the jacaranda tree up here so it doesn't get the full sun that it would prefer to look more golden but this is the only place I, re I really had to plant it and so you can see that little touch of there. And it's a much, um, it doesn't grow as big. The new gro growth is actually kind of like a golden green. And it doesn't have that pungent smell that that one does. Actually, this one apparently has sort of a, a turpentiney taste. So it's not, it's not a good one to cook with. It's more of an ornamental rosemary. So to sum it all up, it likes nice, good, strong light. This just happens to be a cloudy day, otherwise it would be in the sun now. And also a soil that drains well and not too wet because it'll get a root rot. But otherwise, it's a wonderful, beautiful plant to have in the garden. And it's also, like aloe vera, it's a plant with purpose. So I couldn't leave this house and not do a video about rosemary. So I hope you have found it to be helpful and uh, please come back. I have a lot more videos coming your way. Thanks for all your likes, your subscribes, your comments. I really appreciate them. Now let's get out in the garden and make the world a more beautiful place. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.